Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and you're tuned in to Madden 18 on EA Sports. We've got a good one on tap today, and there's going to be two quarterbacks ready to get it done on the gridiron. It's Breeze's Saints going up against Keenum's Vikings. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage takes us to one of the newest jewels on the NFL landscape, U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. It can certainly get loud inside this building. And just a few moments ago when the Vikings were introduced, it was downright shaking in here. They're set for football as the Vikings get ready to do battle with Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. Here's a punter, Thomas Morstead, to get this one started. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. <laughs> and he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Vikings offense taking the field. They'll be led by Case Keenum. And Keenum, he's always kind of been that stopgap guy, sort of the second stringer with upside, if you will. He had a great college career. But, you know, you look at how he's putting it together now in Minnesota, the season they're having. I don't know. Case Keenum's looking pretty darn good. I like how you put it together, and a lot of people didn't think he had the upside. I mean, a lot of people saw him as a third guy, you know, that you could use in a pinch. But you're exactly right. The season he is having right now, I remember he told me one po at one point, he said, all I want is the opportunity to be one of those 32 guys that leads a football team. He said, I think I can do a pretty good job. <laughs> He's exactly right. He has Minnesota in the playoffs and tracking for a possible Super Bowl berth. And in their own stadium to boot, the intended receiver was Laquan Treadwell. That'll bring up second down. And the offensive starters for the Vikings. When I see Latavius Murray with the ball in his hands, I think that he's a dangerous player. He has good speed, good presence to run inside, nice toughness, and good vision that once he gets past the first line of defense, he can make a guy miss and turn it into a bigger game. Offense looking to avoid a third and long at second and ten. Shotgun snap for Keenum. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. I like it. I like it. I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. carry for Latavius Murray. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. They go with Murray again. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. Three. 
And they only need a little bit here. Third down and very short. They'll run here. It's Murray. And an alley to run. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. You and I both know that you don't really truly replace Adrian Peterson, but Latavius Murray is a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him, upright with some power. So here we go, first and ten now. Now the Georgia Southern man, this is Jarek McKinnon. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Here we go now. Green. And now they'll throw with Keenum. To the sideline, and it's caught. But, boy, he's out of bounds. Now they try to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. That was a nice catch, but unable to stay in bounds. And remember, it wasn't a wide receiver who works on that all the time. <laughs> I was going to say, he, he likes to get the ball handed to him. Now, don't get me wrong, he's part of the passing game as well, but maybe a little out of his comfort zone there. Yeah, he might want to have a few words to say to us about that later, but I am still going with you on that one. Wide receivers work on a little bit more. And that is incomplete. So on fourth down, here's Ryan Quigley now to kick this one away. Back deep for the Saints is Ted Ginn. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. Here come the playoff-bound New Orleans Saints, led by Drew Brees. Double-digit wins this year for them. And, you know, this season has kind of answered the question, what could Drew Brees do with a really good running game? Well, he has a really good running game. Well, go back to 2009, when they were sixth in the league in rushing. Won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So here we are again, and they thought they were going to have a three-headed monster because Adrian Peterson was there when this whole season began. And then you add in Alvin Kamara, the rookie runner, and Mark Ingram, who's been a constant, steady player for them. They get rid of Peterson around week six, and those two just absolutely took off. Ingram's over 1,000 yards as a rusher. Both of them are going to be over 1,200 yards combined from the line of scrimmage. You're exactly right. Give Drew Brees a running game, and New Orleans, heading down the stretch, has a very good chance of winning the NFC South. The tight end, Josh Hill, was the target, and that'll bring up second down. And a look now at the offense for New Orleans. Michael Thomas emerged from Ohio State as a mature route runner and a guy with tremendous ball skills downfield. But as one veteran New Orleans Saints player told me last year, his best attribute, he cares so much about the game and is all about winning. No matter what they need him to do on the field, he's willing to go get it done. Second down here after the incomplete pass. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. And now we get a look at the starters on the defensive side for Minnesota. And 2017 for this unit has been a good year. Not unexpected because their head coach, Mike Zimmer, what are, what are his roots? Defensive coordinator in the league for a long time. He was going to build with defense first. And look at the different levels he has. Linval Joseph, defensive tackle, stuffs any run game. At linebacker, Eric Kendricks and Anthony Barr playing at Pro Bowl level in 2017. Then you get back to the secondary. Xavier Rhodes is a lockdown corner. And Harrison Smith at safety, I call him the fixer. Wherever they need to fix something on defense, they move number 22, and he makes plays. Throw left side, taken in by Hill. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. 
It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. We'll see a lot of that from Drew Brees. Spread the field, get rid of the ball quickly. He spreads the field out a lot, so he's able to recognize the defenses, the coverages, and if people are going to blitz him. And he has the fortitude to stand in there when they do. He serves as his own blitz control, so to speak. Hey, you've got a free runner coming. That's one less guy in coverage. He'll stand in there, take the hit, and deliver a strike downfield. Breeze now on first down. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball, because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And the offense behind the chains here a touch on second and 11. Breeze gives it up to Ingram. Takes it to the 26, just a one-yard gain. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. From the gun, it's Breeze. On target over the middle to Hill. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. The last couple of drives have ended in punts. Maybe the crowd minds that, but you're a defensive guy. You're okay with a couple of punt drives. Listen, I'm the guy that loves a 0-0 pitch game All right, in baseball. I can handle that going into the seventh inning. I think the crowd, though, they want to see a little bit more excitement. Let's see if someone can break something free on offense and get going. Offense at a premium the last two drives. Here we go now. Boom, ah! On first down, Keenum. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up third and nine. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Keenum on third down. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. A gain of four on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. And, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, 
give him 15. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The Saints coming out now to take the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. First down, Breeze, and Hill with it over the middle. That throw good for four. It's second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. On second down, here's Breeze. Oh, look at Thomas wide open. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. Breeze on the hook up to Thomas for the New Orleans first. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Again, they'll run with Ingram. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. From the gun on third down, Breeze. Brought in left side by Sneed. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Breeze finding Sneed there for a Saint first down. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not the, it came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Breeze hands to Ingram. Now a flag comes in from the umpire after a gain of about four. And this looks like it's going to be holding. So some holding over on the Still left side down. of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. is caught by Gann, and he'll get it down here to the 43. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. A 
the first carry now. This is Alvin Kamara. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. One yard officially on the pickup. And it'll leave him with a third and 11. The Saints on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and 11. Shotgun now for Breeze. And almost picked off. I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Thomas Morstead now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. Yeah, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now, not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? First down, Keenum. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And it's second down. Second down run for Murray. And he's got some space here. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They need to make up some ground, and they did. Prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. Can't wait to see what the second quarter has in store. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football. They've got a third down and five to start things out. Take him down at the 31-yard line. Only two on the screen pass there, and it'll be fourth down. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. Here's Ryan Quigley now, as he's on to punt for Minnesota. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Now it's Ginn. Oh, good move. 
Yeah, nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? Play fake here on first down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Breeze now on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. That throw good for four. It's second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. The Saints on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Now, Breeze again. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. So far they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now sometimes if you have a game where neither side has scored, Three punts isn't a bad thing, but when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. Space to maneuver at the 40. And some room to run now. And he takes it all the way down to the 32. A big run that time by Murray. 42 yards on the ground. The ultimate speedster showing that speed of this in front of this home crowd. They love that. Made me stand up on that run because right now all I want to do is wave to the crowd. More noise, more noise. He got a reward for that one. A big time monster run.
They go back to Murray on first down. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Flashy plays, as people like to call them, that attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back -back five yard gains, didn't force the ball downfield, picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. Now let's go! They go play action here on first down. Going for it all. And this is going to be caught. No, they say it's incomplete. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown. Forbath on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7 0 lead. Forbath now to kick it away after the main field goal. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Now we'll see what Michael Thomas and the rest of the offense has in store here. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Hey, why not? Four <laughs> verts, one of the best routes in football. Hard to cover each guy all the way along the route. So far, just one catch for him. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. This is Ingram. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Now 
Now Breeze throwing on second down. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. First and ten, here's Breeze. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Brandon Coleman was the intended target. And now it's second down. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. handoff it's Mark Ingram and that play will go nowhere losing yardage back near midfield at the 49 and they'll lose a yard that time and that's going to lead to a third down partner you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset you want to get this running game going I want to get this running game going I'm going down there and saying gentlemen we have got to run the football we've got to get it going right now yeah to this point in the second quarter it has been a struggle The Saints on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and 11. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. down carry it's Camara and he's going to get this down near the 20 yard line 12 more yards there and another first down at this stage of the game the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air but in a sense that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance they pick up another first down with that run First with Camara. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. A one yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. Still seven down. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Breeze to throw on second down. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. It'll be a two-yard gain, and they'll be facing a third and 12. Was that a receiver? 
<laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school. Got the toes down and stayed in bounds. Bree's going to throw. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Still first down. And the seemingly endless drive continues. Breeze now. That's complete right around the eight. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. Second down, Ingram, and he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two there, and it's third down. That definitely sets up a much more difficult third down. Yeah, you figure second and two, one they thought they could pick up. Now you're facing third and four. Yeah, got to give the front seven a lot of credit for making that play. I'm just starting to wonder, partner, is second and short also a throwing down in the NFL now? The Saints on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and four. Throwing now is Breeze. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. I'll tell you what, Brandon, if I see a dime look, if I see six defensive backs near the goal line, I'll change it to a running play every time. And they had six there. Surprised he didn't audible at the line? Very much so. I'm going to count on my offensive line in this situation against the lighter defensive backs and try to push it across the end zone that way. On fourth down, off goes Drew Brees, and on comes the Saints kicker Will Lutz for the field goal attempt. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Lutz's kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they get the field goal, but part of that was a 14-play drive to get the three. Normally, when you hold the ball that long, run that many plays, you end up in the end zone. There's a breakdown on the defense. Something happens. In this case, that didn't. But really good ball controlled by the offense. They're hoping that they can wear them down if they keep having drives like that. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. This is fielded at the goal line. Gets past one man. And now the spin. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And now we move our focus to Stephon Diggs. Not only does he not have a catch, I don't think he's been targeted in this game, but they're winning. And if you ask a receiver of his magnitude, 
he'll tell you that it's because everyone is focused on him anyway. Okay, you've taken it away. No catches, no targets, but we're still winning. I've opened things up for the rest of my team. Yeah. I know how receivers think. <laughs> They've been using him as a decoy, and effectively so. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Keenum throwing on second. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. The Vikings on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is going to be third and 13. Shotgun snap for Keenum. And this is going to be incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL. But if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. Here's Ryan Quigley now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Here's Ginn. Look at the spin. Two minutes remain here in the first half. More from Minneapolis after this. In just two minutes' time, don't forget, we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry. down as Breeze. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Second down following the incompletion. From the gun, it's Breeze. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. It's a gain of nine yards. And that'll bring up a third and one. Here's Breeze. He goes underneath to Ingram. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. On first down, Breeze to the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. They'll give him a yard on the play, and it'll bring up a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field.
Again, they'll throw with Breeze. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. Now Breeze on third down. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Vikings turn up the heat and they block it. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Pass the 20, and he's going to score. It's a Viking touchdown. Partner, as you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Formath to add the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Format to send it away now following the touchdown. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. Breeze now on first down. He dumps it down to Ingram. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Second down, here's Breeze. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Shotgun now for Breeze. Throwing over the middle, 
And it's incomplete. The target that time, Michael Thomas. And that'll bring up second down. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze. The throw to the left side caught by Coleman. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Breeze to throw again. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Call it a gain of three, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Thomas Morstead now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. So we have reached halftime here in an 11-point contest as we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. The Vikings are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Saints didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Now to late in the first half, Breeze has got the completion from the gun, and he ends up at the 49-yard line before he stopped on the play. Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half. Forbath out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Saints now. They'll go on offense first here to begin the third quarter. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most half? Of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. And the third quarter starts with a run by Ingram. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. From the gun on third down, Breeze. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. 
Uh, we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tempt to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Try and get the running game going here with Murray. And he'll get only a couple up to the 22. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. Second down, eight. Carry of the game now. Murray. And an Latavius Murray. The 40. 30. The 20. 10. 5. A big run that time by Murray. 77 yards. So you got the lead here in the second half. Obviously, you love big runs like that at any time. Here, you really like it. And how about the confidence that's being exhibited by that offense now? They don't care what you're lining up doing on the defensive side. They want the big fella to carry the football and carry it often. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Hurry up, here we go. They'll try to run with McKinnon. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Jarek McKinnon taking it in from two yards out. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. Sometimes a group that gets overlooked, certainly the offensive line. Right there, they really helped with that score. Didn't they tell us in our meeting that when we score touchdowns, running the ball, that means the offensive line actually scored first by moving people back beyond the end zone. We saw evidence of that on that play. Now four bath for the extra point. And it's 21 to 3. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's culminated by a two yard touchdown run. Four bath out to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start the drive from the 25. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. 
That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Wasn't that long ago that the NFL guys really didn't adopt much from the college game, but one thing that has crept in there is spreading things out, opening things up, not even just in tempo, but maybe getting better line splits and spreading the field. I think that would be a great strategy right now to try and open things up in the run game. Now Breeze. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. So here we go, a third down after the second down pass completion. Now flags will come in. And I think this is against the Saints up front. False start, offense. So a costly penalty and now a tougher third down situation. Now Breeze. Coleman has it here right side. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. Here's Thomas Morstead now as he's on to punt for New Orleans. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. this across the 25-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Again, it's Murray. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Second down following the run. gun Keenum over the middle here to Rudolph and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38 yard line four yards on the completion and it sets up a third down I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine when I see a big man like that make a catch all I keep thinking to myself is big man with football <laughs> look out everyone he may not juke you a whole lot right he may not run past you because of his size you talk about a guy weighing in the 270 range 
But boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. On third down, Murray. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Officially a gain of just a yard there, but they do convert on third and inches. But we tend to give those running backs that are slashers a lot of credit, but how about guys who are maulers? Because that's what you want in short yardage situations. And we just saw that occur right there, didn't we? Vertical downhill running. Side the tight end Rudolph. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. See what the offense comes with here, second and eight. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Call it an eight yard gain, much better shape now on third and just a yard. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. The Vikings on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They keep it on the ground, but this time it's Murray. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. But that certainly felt like an example of a defense just saying, OK, <laughs> we've had enough. We've gotten mashed all night long. About time we got a good play in. But flip it over to the offensive side. They've got to be really upset that they allowed a play like that to happen. They were pitching such a great game. They want to keep it going. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. fake here on first down. Pressure coming from the Vikings and they get there and bring him down. Ben Gideon from that outside linebacker spot. He's able to get in there for a loss of nine. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. Quarterback was hit. second down. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Ben Gideon in there to drop him for his second sack now here tonight. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet.
Third and long now after the sack of Breeze and the Saints up against it here. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. It's brought in right side by Ginn. And now look at this, big gain but a fumble. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. It makes so many catches that are so tough, so acrobatic, so difficult, that often surprises me when they actually turn the ball over. You know, when the ball actually comes free. It's amazing sometimes because of what we see them do on so many different plays. Had the catch, but couldn't control it on the contact. come the Vikings and you know their previous possession they were able to move the football but still wound up punting in the end you know in 2016 Carolina had a 20 play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes and remember how it ended in a punt yeah I mean how does that happen you just don't see that happen every day and this one maybe not quite that bad but still you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long agreed Again, this is Murray. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. And it's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Again with Murray. He's seen a ton of action tonight. And he gets it down to the 32. They hit six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. So it'll be first down here after the run. From the gun, it's Keenum. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Sometimes the most effective routes are the ones that you run in the backyard. You probably ran them when you were five years old. How about a little curl there against zone? But the key to it is finding the open spots in the zone. How a linebacker or a defensive back will widen to give you space. Find that area and let your quarterback hit you. A handoff, it's Murray. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that plan any down. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. McKinnon. And he'll take this down for about four yards, down to the 15. I don't care what the emphasis is in the NFL at any given time. Every defense is still going to say their number one goal every game is stop the run. And right now, they're not doing that. And that really chips away at your confidence. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Here we go now. Green, 39. Here again is McCannon. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. 
Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves, start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. The Vikings on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This will be third and five. Here's McKinnon, and he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. He lost two, and it brings up Ford. They tried to run right into the teeth of the defense on third down, but um, looked like those teeth were pretty sharp. <laughs> <laughs> they were having absolutely none of it stuffed him for a loss. Yeah, couldn't get any leverage up front and move people aside in order to run the ball. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. A 33-yarder from the left hash. And Forbath will put this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So it's three more points, and that widens things out even further here in the fourth. Hey, in this league, you can never have too much. So if you're in range, grab the three whenever you can. now to kick it away after the made field goal. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. <laughs> They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> and 10. Here's Breeze. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. What a catch and one-handed and I'm starting to lose my awe about the play and maybe I shouldn't. How much of this is the player? How much of it is the glove? Well, those gloves they do have a little grip to them. They get a little extra tackiness to them now, and I know the guys in the NFL, the competition committee, some other places, they're talking about examining those gloves to see if they're having too much of an effect on the game. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped. But I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Now the offense lining up first and ten. From the gun, it's Breeze. 
throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Tried to get it to Willie Sneed there. That'll bring up second down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Breeze again here on second and ten. That's out to Hill, right side complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A very solid gain of 27. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. And now a first down following that long gain. Now, Breeze again. He caught right side. It's Lewis. Takes this to the 32, maybe the 31. Defensively rallying to the ball after the nice move. Second down now after the pass completion. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. And his throw here is incomplete. There's so much precision in an offense, especially when you're throwing the ball. And in an out route, plenty of it. How about the quarterback hitting his back foot? Ball's out of his hands. Receiver making his break, making his cut. He's got to time up perfectly. Not always easy to do. Just let him a little too much. Yeah, I remember back in the good old days, I was talking to a quarterback, and he said everything they did was on the count system. So when he took a snap, he counted in his head for certain routes, different time frames for each one, and he knew if the ball wasn't out of his hand at that point, he'd better eat it because the play was dead. And there on third and short, they just tried to spread the field. It worked. And I think that the spreading of the field, the extra receivers has really become the next in the evolutionary chain in the NFL. Go all the way back in that situation, you're handed to the fullback, right? As we evolve, maybe you pitched it to your tailback. Now you spread the field, and you have your choices of where to throw it and complete it for a first down. Throwing on first down is Breeze. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Breeze will try again on second down. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, it's Breeze. And the pressure gets to Breeze as he's taken down. Shamar Steven able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. They were trying to set up that screen, trying to get that screen to formulate. Took too long. Ends up taking a sack, and that leads you to a couple of other questions. Number one, why don't you just get rid of the football near the screen, guys, so that you don't take an interception? But really, the big one, they just took everything away, and he was really kind of flummoxed on that play and ended up taking the sack. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now Breeze, got to have this one. And Gim's got it. 
They'll get 23 yards there. And that leads to a New Orleans first down. Felt compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You stopped to get it done, as you noted, and they did. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first down, Breeze. That's caught. It's Thomas. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. Ball start, offense. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. After the penalty, it's Ingram. And he will not only not get the yard he needed, he goes the wrong direction. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. This linebacking core, they've done a good job of keeping that running game in check, haven't they? They certainly have, and what they'll also do when this game is over is thank the guys up front, the big defensive line, because they've kept them clean, so to speak, not letting blockers get to them, allowing them to run to the football and keep that running game bottled up. Now Breeze on third down. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. Ted Ginn from 10 yards out. And the Saints make some inroads here to that deficit. Coming into the year, Breeze, 465 touchdown passes. Add another one to the total. You know, it's funny. I just talked with his college head coach, and he told me that when Drew was a sophomore at Purdue, they weren't sure he was truly the starter, even though he started the opening game. And he made a play early in that one where the coach got on the headset and told the rest of the staff, well, fellas, we found our quarterback. <laughs> now we got to make sure we find the rest of our team. <laughs> Breeze hasn't looked back since. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And our attention here turns to Latavius Murray. He has a chance to hit that often elusive 200-yard mark on this drive. And most of the time during a game, people aren't keeping track of individual statistics. Are you sure? Well, a lot of the runners kind of <laughs> know. But I'll guarantee you, someone has sent word into the offensive line that he's got a chance to get over 200 on this drive. That should give them a little extra motivation because they love it when backs break that barrier. Absolutely. We'll see if he can do it. First times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. 
run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. They go with Murray again. A very good move, but for a relatively modest gain out near the 32. It'll be a gain of seven, and they get it back to a third and three. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. The Vikings on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. Here it's third and three. Here we go now. They'll run here. It's Murray. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Brendan, every great running backs coach I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about to run them into submission. Uh, I think. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. down. Keenum over the middle. He's got Treadwell. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Another nice pick up through the air and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Second and just one. Watch tight. Tight is right. Watch tight. Tight is right. Here we go now. Three, 19. Here's Murray. Not enough there for a first. No gain, as a matter of fact. And it leaves them at third and one. Well, he didn't make headway on that one, but he's had plenty of carries all night long. I just wonder if maybe he's a little bit tired from toting the rock that much. The Vikings on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. They run it with McKinnon. And shutting him off, now open field. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves his sticks. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what we said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. So the offense has it first and ten. Keenum going to throw. The throw left side complete to Treadwell. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little route, tackle and inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. Fresh set of downs here. This is Murray. And they'll get to him just inside the 15, even after the strong run we just saw. They're able to corral him quickly defensively. Able to stay in bounds, and the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in, and all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold them up. 
Second, third guy in, rake it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They run with Murray. Oh, now he bowls him over. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the threes. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Starting to look like this drive, it may be the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and mini camps for these situations, these scenarios, to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. The offense on third down, they're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. They're looking at a third and goal here. Let's go! Blue Lady! Blue Lady! Ah. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll take this one down inside the 5 to the 3. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This to make it a three-score game late. And Forbath will put this one through, and that'll push the lead up to 17. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point. Being three scores down, I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth.
Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. It's almost a like, coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Breeze now on first down. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Emerson Griffin in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. Now Breeze throwing on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Incomplete pass on second down. Let's see what the offense draws up here on third. Shotgun now for Breeze. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he goes out of bounds across the 40-yard line. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. by Coleman and taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. Breeze to throw again. Over the middle complete. It's Coleman. And he's going to get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And he'll indeed get him to the line and spike it here to stop the clock. And here comes play number six on this drive. Breeze to throw on second down. And that is caught, but he will come down out of bounds, says the side judge, incomplete. Suddenly appeared like they had a great chance of that turning into a touchdown, but maybe led him just a bit too much. Yeah, out of the back of the end zone. That's tough on a five-yard pass, but one of that distance, that can be tough to gauge when you're in the back of the end zone. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. So pin that one on the rookie right tackle. Remember those days when the right side was simply the run blocking side? Now you're dealing with some of the better pass rushers in the league. It'll make you a little jittery. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And now another one thrown incomplete. And that was a nice play. He knocked it away, but obviously you want the interception in this situation. You want to take away any chance that they have any decision to make on fourth down. But things happen so quickly in the end zone, in this compressed area of the field, that you're just happy to knock it away and not allow a touchdown. Thank you. 
All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he locates Josh Hill complete. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. The decision to go for it pays off, and now they're set up first and goal. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. And looked like some movement there. Let's get the call. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. On second down, here's Breeze. This will be caught at about the six. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Five yards that time on the completion. And now it's third and goal. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. So they got to have six here. It's third and goal. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment defense. So that's going to move them half the distance. First of all, you can't jump in this situation, but think about your play calling now. Could easily change what you want to do and maybe make things a little bit easier. They got to have six here. It's third and goal. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. Someone moved. Flag is out. That's going to be five yards. And that'll drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. Gotta have six here. It's third and goal. Bree's gonna throw. That'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. And a field goal obviously means nothing here. They're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And the Vikings are going to win this football game. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. And tough starting field position here. All right, here we go. A run. It's Murray. And he's going to be taken down here at about the 10. A gain of three, second down. 
And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.